Hey guys, Blake here. Hoping you're having a good Saturday. Hope everybody uh, is battling the allergies like me and winning. Uh, they snuck up on me late, so got this fun voice going. Anyways, yesterday I was able to watch uh, part two in our Christian Atheist series, and I love it. Um, there's going to be a bunch of opportunity for you guys to take your groups deeper, a bunch of opportunity for you guys to create vulnerability-based trust if you want it. Um, so I just want to encourage you to be bold and lead. Um, your students want you to create uh, an environment of depth. They want you to lead them there. They want value. And the way we're going to do it is if we go first. So just like in our meeting, um, we created vulnerability-based trust by me going first. I want to encourage you guys um, today to share um, in your small group, not in the big group, but in your small group, um, kind of some of your thoughts on these questions that we, as we jump into it. So when, when you look at the video, um, it's going to bring up this idea of, of why do bad things happen to good people? And that's what we as Christians think. Hey, we're good people. Why did God let something bad happen, right? That's, that's how we always think. Someone dies, um, someone gets cancer, parents divorce, whatever. We always think, hey, God, I'm a Christian. I'm saved. Why did you, this all-knowing, all-powerful God, let this bad thing happen to me? What in reality, the question is, and, and what I love to set up for students is, you know, we all start in hell. We all start as sinners. So the question isn't, why, why do bad things happen to good people? Is why do good things happen to bad people? Why do good things happen to sinners? Why is there grace? If we all deserve punishment, if we all deserve conviction, why did Jesus come in the first place? Why, why are we allowed to experience this love? Why are we allowed to go into communion, relationship, and worship? So, um, in the video tonight, that, that's going to be your win, right? Qu kids are going to ask that question all the time. You got to flip it on them. You got to you got to set it up and really let them know that hey, we we start in hell. We don't start in heaven and, and lose our way out. We don't start holy and healthy and everything's good and slowly God begins to do bad things from us. We, we deserve sickness. We deserve pain. We deserve punishment. We deserve emotional hurt and all these things. But God's grace changes all that. God's grace and forgiveness changes all that. So. Tonight, there's a, a hand-raising uh, opportunity. So house leaders, when you're doing your, your one two-minute plug in the beginning, right? You pull everybody together. Hey, tonight we're in part two of our Christian Atheist series, and there's a, there's a really good question that we're going to hear from tonight. And I want you as students to begin to think, you know, are you a Christian Atheist? And you don't need to raise your hand, but just begin to ask, like, where do you really sit in this series? What is God really wanting to do? And let them know. Hey, in this video, uh, Craig is going to do kind of a Q&A, like, hey, raise your hand if, and if you guys are comfortable, I want you guys to do this. I want you guys to raise your hand um, if you've ever done these things, and it will just create some freedom in the room. So you as leaders need to do it too. Um, house leader, set that stage. Leaders will do it, and then they'll follow along. So do that hand-raising opportunity. Begin to know that, that that idea of starting in hell, starting on earth versus starting in heaven is going to come up. Um, ask that question in, in, in your group. Hey, how do you feel knowing that you do not deserve good things? Um, again, it changes it. Um, ask the question, uh, if the Christian walk is about the inward, right, what we do in the heart, like our, our inward appearances, why do we focus so much on the outward? And let your students begin to talk about these things. You know, for me, I, I, I like the outward because I can tell where I'm at. I can tell if I'm doing good or not. I can tell, you know, by, by the fact that I've read my Bible or by the fact that I'm attending church. There's like a checkbox so I can look at myself and say I'm doing a good job versus the inward. Do I know God? Well, how, do I, how do I know that? Who do I compare that with? And you can't. And that's what I love about the question is, is it makes students focus not on others but on themselves. Do you know God more today than you did yesterday? Did you worship and engage with God Wednesday more than you did the week before? Um, so ask those questions. Um, look for those vulnerable moments, right? Let them question their faith. We want them to question their faith. So here's what that means. Um, I want you, if you have a, a point, to share when you've questioned God, when you've been upset at God, when you've been frustrated with God. Um, you know, for me, it was, it was when my dad died. It didn't make any sense. I was angry. I was frustrated. God, why did you let him die? And and I went and yelled at on a, on top of a mountain and, and just was mad at God. Um, you don't need to answer their questions and let them know. Hey, I'm not going to answer these things. I, I may not have an answer to it, but I want to know. Hey, when do you guys struggle with it? Um, you know, when people get sick, when people get cancer, when people die, 
uh, when, when people get abused, when, I mean, there's all kinds of things. So let them talk and just let them share and let it run. Now, what I've realized is I, we need a better way to um, kind of evaluate healthiness, right? At the end of the night, I kind of get with the groups and say, hey, how you guys doing? How'd it go? And, and you always hear good. So I'm going to try to give you guys some tangible questions. Um, and slowly our house leaders will begin to report these things back. But let me know what you guys think of these as we and continue to grow and encourage you guys. So the first one is, is how did you take the group deeper, create tension, or challenge them tonight? Um, again, we're looking for opportunity to facilitate conversation. We're looking for opportunity for students to share what's going on in their life. The second thing is, is how did you create vulnerability-based trust? And did a student respond? So we as leaders go first. We, we, we stick ourselves out there, i.e. with a story about, about a pain or a doubt or a frustration that we've had with God. And then we pitch it. Hey, well, what do you guys think? Or what did you hear me say? Or what did you hear them say? Or how does it make you feel? Or what are you thinking knowing that you, you, you start in hell versus starting in heaven? And how does that change your faith? Those, those questions create vulnerability they have to talk about. Um, second thing is, or the third thing is, is how did you create uh, the most value or meaning tonight? Like, what what was your win? For some of you guys, it's going to be laughing. For some of you guys, it's going to be um, pulling a new student into your group. For some of you guys, it's going to be, hey, there, there was a student who, who wanted to share, and we paused and allowed them to talk about something that was going on in their life. Hey, for some of you, it's going to be, we, we prayed for each other tonight. But I don't want superficial and fluffy. Like, what was the, the most important thing for you? And maybe when you begin to shift where we put value. And then the last thing is, is how did you challenge them? Um, and here's, here's what I mean by that. Not like go charge the hill and here's what you need to do. But how did we challenge them to go deeper in their faith? How did we challenge them to talk about something they're uncomfortable with? How did we challenge them to, to go somewhere non-superficial and real? Um, not, not going and praying for the one or inviting someone to church or any of that. Where did we make them think? Where did we make them really begin to apply their faith? Um, for me, I've, I've had moments, and some of you have been there, where, where I, I basically go around and ask them if they believe in Jesus, yes or no. Hey, do you, do you start in heaven or hell? Go, heaven or hell, heaven or hell, heaven or hell. Just see where they're at, and then ask them why. So I love you guys. Uh, you create so much meaning to this group. You guys are doing so much more than I could ever dream of. I'm so thankful for your ownership, for your buy-in with these students um, so I appreciate you. Again, you you are the ones who are creating the intimacy. And thank you so much. Have a good day. Bye.